Uh, I want to talk a little bit about robots and human behavior. The major difference between cybernated organisms and human systems. A lot of people think that programming is exactly the same in people and robotics. It is not. The major difference is that you can design a robot to walk over, pick up an object, put it in another place. But if the robot, before it even moves, if you put the object in the place the robot was going to put it in, it would still walk over and grab nothing in particular. Do you understand that? That's programmed. The difference between human systems and robots, it's not linear. That means that the robot can do certain things that you program into it. And if you look at that under a microscope, you can see magnetic domains that'll make the robot walk over to a given area and sit in a chair. If you pull the chair away, the robot will walk over and sit on nothing and fall over. That's program. The human system differs considerably. It has, when you work on a human being, Let's, let's put it this way, or, or a chimpanzee, or any animal. I'll work with the chimp this time. I'll have different, put the chimp in a box, a big box, and in that box are rods sticking out different lengths with a cue, a circle, triangle on one of them, different patterns. And you don't have to teach it anything. It'll walk in and sooner or later, it'll touch those things. When it touches any one of them, water will come forth. Touches another one, food. Touches another one, a soft bed comes out of the wall. If the animal is put there for a long enough time, it will use those rods appropriately. Any animal has a range of behavior. When put in an environment, it doesn't respond like a robot. It looks at the environment and seeks reinforcement, food. If the leaves are circular where the food is, it'll go to the circular leaves. That's called associative memory. Program computers have no associative memory. They follow a pattern. So if you look at a phonograph record with a microscope, you'll see zigzags cut in the Bakelite record. Those zigzags uh, representation of the voice of a person. While the record is playing, that if it's somebody singing Caruso or somebody else, can't deviate from those patterns. Robots that are programmed can't deviate from those programs unless you have a path alongside of it. And uh, you show variations and instead of a circle, slight ellipse the animal will touch that thing thinking it's a circle because they're not that critical and it gets burnt slightly. So it will never touch that one again. That's what the animal has that the robot doesn't have. If the robot touches something and it doesn't reinforce it, how do you reinforce a robot? If, it's, if he gets stung, that wouldn't bother him at all. But a robot can learn to respond to different figures. When he sees a triangle, presses a button, he gets lubricated. But he doesn't feel good when he gets lubricated. So there's no reason to retain that action. It's only when a human touches something and they feel good touching it that they repeat it. A robot cannot touch something and say, hey, that feels good. They can reach out, do that, and pull back, but they can't make anything of it. Do you understand that? The reason I say, do you understand that, is because there's so much conflict today about robots and people. Will robots take over? Not if they're programmed not to take over. If they're programmed to take over, they can only shoot a guy in a certain uniform. And if the guy stays put in a given area, the robot can walk over. Unless you condition a robot through the eyes,
to follow anything that moves and shoots it. Is a robot an assassin? No. It's programmed to shoot. That's quite different. Human beings have, some people believe, 10 to 15 billion neurons. A robot has hundreds of thousands of associates, not billions. So if you learn that a cup gives you water, anything that looks like a cup might support water. We can deviate from our programming. Our programming appears rigid, but alongside of it is associative memory. That I touched that and I felt pain. I touched the other thing and I didn't feel pain. I got something. A robot never looks at a thing and says, that's interesting. If you were to float midair in front of a robot, would say, hey, now that, now that is interesting. It can't do that. It can only do what it's programmed to do. A man can see things and be programmed and compare it to something else. Is that very clear? Or do you want to question anything there? That's the major difference between program behavior and human programming. Humans have a lot of associations prior to programming. So the other associations, if it reminds them of the other, he can deviate. That's why people walk out of here when I speak with different interpretations. Kurzweil talks about implanting, when nanotechnology comes about, implanting something in the head that, um, you know, like a second brain that may be so fast and that it could take over the other brain in the person. This is something he's raised. Well, you can do that, but it's not... It it doesn't give them leverage like, I wonder about that. I, I've never seen that happen. A man could say that. A man could look at an event and say, that's strange the way that paper holds up that speaker. A robot does not do that. It looks at the speaker. It doesn't even look at it and say, that looks like a speaker. Unless you put a speaker in front of the robot and say, that's a speaker. So when the eye sees it, it says, that's the speaker. When you turn it sideways, it doesn't know what that is. When you turn it sideways and say, that's also a speaker. If you rotate a speaker in many positions, so the robot has associations with the shape in different positions, you can call it a speaker. But if it's a call an orange, an orange, but if you cut it in half, it can't call it an orange. It doesn't say it looks like half an orange. But the, Do you the, understand that? Okay. The, this thing that Kurzweil is putting out, like the singularity, is when you start to implant things in people's heads that have so many more uh, calculating ability. Or if it is not in, connected to the other neurons, it won't do anything. It couldn't take over. No. Unless it's connected. Well, he's, he's proposing that it is connected somehow, that there is some interface between... If there is an interface... Organic neurons respond to a certain rate of speed. Anything beyond that rate, it can't respond. Electronic systems travel almost at the speed of light. Neural associations are relatively slow. So if you try to speed up digestion of food in a human, the digestive acids flow at a certain rate. If you were to triple the rate, it might digest portions of the intestines. Do you understand what I mean? You can take a bear, for example, let's take a bear and put it in a room this size with a bunch of objects sticking out. They have to stick out, 40 of them. A bear might learn how to use 12 of them, but not 40. It won't remember 40. It doesn't have the neuronal amount to remember. Well, a bear could remember. Of course, when a bear walks through an environment, this bush has berries and he remembers where the bush is. This area has animals that I can eat. A bear can build up maybe thousands of associations. But first you have to study the range of the animal. 
how many levers an animal can remember will tell you what its outside response will be. You find a bear can learn to work 47 levers. And beyond that, a little beyond that or a little less, if that's true, then you know what the bear can respond to in the environment. 40 different systems. A human can gen generate associations with thousands of things in the environment. A human, if a human learns to eat certain food and he has to climb a tree to get it, if you put that food at the base of the tree, he won't climb the tree. A robot will. Do you understand that? If you program a robot to climb a tree to get the apple, it'll do that. But if you put the apple on the ground, the robot says, ah, that makes simplifies things. No, unless you build in something special in the robot to handle unforeseen variables. And that's what people don't know how to do yet. They don't know how to program a robot to say, what have we here? Because a robot, the word, what have we here, doesn't mean anything to a robot. It means something to a human being. The, the roboticists and Kurzweil, too, are bringing up, you know, when the, when the robot does become connected to the environment and uh, does have enough information that it would no. surpass people no. and a overtake people. A robot people. does not ask questions. A robot does not say, I've been here before, I've seen that before. They don't have enough neurons to build all kinds of associations. Do you think it's possible that they can do that, if they use biological... Well, if it's programmed, no. But if a robot is self-programming, then the reason for a robot's actions are very different than human systems. When human puts something to his mouth, it tastes good. When a robot does nothing, there's no reward. Now, what's a reward to a robot? Sitting down, as I say, I'm, I'm so tired, and now I feel better. He doesn't feel. So when he sits down, he doesn't say, it's good to have a chair in my area. He doesn't give a shit about those things. If the light gets so bright that the eyes of the robot turn off, he says, I can't see, if you wire him that way. But he doesn't turn down the light unless you wire it that way. Then he turns down the light when it gets bright, but not because it's bright, because he has senses that turn off the light. Do you understand that difference? You were explaining last night this in terms of humans have to have experience. Yes, to that means react. a robot doesn't seek experience. A robot doesn't want to know why some tires wear out faster than others. So he doesn't take a microscope and looks at the rubber under a microscope. A robot is not equipped that way. They don't have pleasure and pain. If they had pleasure and pain, if they did, they would have preferences. Do you understand? If a robot cuts wood with a rotary saw, all the wood is shoved in there, automatically cuts it. If you put a human in there, cut it too. He doesn't say, just a minute, that's a person. I don't want to cut that. The robot cannot do anything unless it's programmed to do it. And it could be programmed to cut wood, but it'll cut anything else shoved in there. If you interfere with its programming, it doesn't say, hey, now wait a while, you're interfering with program. If radar picks up fog in San Francisco, the airplane might fly above the weather. The airplane moves up based on what's out there. If it's fog, it moves up. But it doesn't move up to avoid the fog. That's human project projection. The robot moves up because there was fog ahead. Its senses bounce back and give it a thing that elevate, controls the elevators and makes it move up. If it's raining, the robot may open an umbrella above itself. But when the raindrops hit the umbrella, they make contact with two terminals. So the flows across, that opens the umbrella. But the robot says, it's raining, I'm going to get wet, 
Uh, oh, no, none of that. Do you understand that? I'm talking about robotics today. So when people say, do you think the robots will take over? There's no basis for it if they're programmed a certain way.